nipple flashing. Modesty, Whoa. bro. Dude, don't get too comfortable around us. You Goodness. know how that is. Causing me to stumble over here. <laughs> <laughs> the Perry the Platypus, you trying to bring it back? <laughs> I can't do the Perry the Platypus thing. But I can do the Dr. Doofensmirch. So you can't do got that quite the, well. We can do the, the, here, I'll do it from a distance. Go ahead. Hey, the platypus, you're just in time for me to take over the tri-state area. <laughs> <laughs> Perry, <laughs> you've changed. Hey, HMP. Well, anyways, um, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome to the Disney podcast. <laughs> we just talk about, guppies. we talk about Disney characters and we evaluate and assess character <laughs> development. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dave Schmerz, come on, let's let's be real here. That man has just been on a downhill slope ever since he turned away from Jesus. Childhood trauma. Yes. It's also because he's shaped um, like a deformed triangle. Mm. Um, his head shape actually looks more like a boomerang. <laughs> but... Um, that's just that's just his nose. Anyways, um, welcome to the podcast, you guys. We are in the back cave, the new back cave that we have now set up. I kind of like redid everything in this room. Got uh, my uh, I got a TV up here. Put some lights in here. Got a little rack. I'm gonna rebuild a desk. But now we're doing video, so that's pretty dope. So if you're watching the video for this, what's popping? Um, this is a continuation of the last episode that we just did, which was on singleness. Um, we were talking all about how um, you need to stop crying about being single and just do something with your life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but also, like, not kidding. We'll be more graceful in our approach with it. <laughs> but there's some truth to, put to it, it, though. Not lightly. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to be, um, oh, what's an uh, anger translator from uh, yeah. Team Peel? <laughs> all right. So I need you to say something really nice, and I'm going to be the mean person that translates for you about singleness. It is okay to feel what you're feeling when you are feeling alone. Why are you whining and complaining about your singleness when it's nothing to do with you and everything to do about your relationship with Jesus? <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We'll anger translate at the beginning of that every wraps episode. up our part two on singleness. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. No, for real, though. Uh, continuation of this topic of singleness. Um, I think uh, that the last one we covered a few different areas of just talking about like how we need to be more mobilized to advance the kingdom and realize that every day is a gift and not to coast through our, our relationship with Jesus until we happen to land a relationship, but making the most of every single moment that we mm -hmm. have for the kingdom because I am a married man and I cannot do as much as Connor can do for the kingdom because Connor is not married. He is only in a relationship, but Connor cannot do as much for the kingdom as Christian can do because Connor is in a relationship. And so he has things that are responsibilities in his life that he has to attain to with his relationship. And the same even goes for me at an even bigger scale. So like, while like marriage might be a beautiful thing and it brings a lot of beautiful things when we're looking at the big picture of what we're really called to do in, in our ministry and for the kingdom of God, we realize that like, Oh, I actually can do less for the kingdom the more I pursue a relationship. And so that's actually like counter to what I thought, because I thought that if I pursued this relationship, then man, like me and her are going to go or her and I, him and I are going to go and, you know, pursue the kingdom. We're going to do so much for him. But like, it always seems when you get into a relationship, but it kind of goes counter, um, in a lot of different ways. Now there's exceptions to that case, but more often than not, we realize that like, we'll look back and realize, I wish I did more with my singleness because I was fighting so long to just get into a relationship. I compromised for a couple, wasted a lot of my time, got hurt along the process. And now somehow landed myself in a situation where I'm either in a relationship I'm not happy about, or you're in a relationship that you are happy about, but it was a very long and hard journey to get there. Mm -hmm. So um, we were just kind of jumping back in on this topic with a few more questions that we wanted to address, just more about singleness and how we can um, find contentment and how we can see it in a different light than what we are used to. Yeah, Connor kind of ended the last podcast on like being on mission. Um, could you just kind of re-say what you said just to touch on for that. sure yeah i think um i was just talking about how sometimes when we're single or even when we're in a relationship we get so caught up with either you know pleasing our wife and um you know pouring into that relationship or if we're single we're so focused on wanting to be in a relationship and justifying like why we should be in one that we forget our total 
like our overarching mission of why we're here on this earth as Christians is to save, um, help save, you know, help bring the great commission, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, the only hope that we have for an eternal or eternity with, um, you know, God forever, like that is our mission. And we get so focused up on, you know, I'm anxious about not being in a relationship right now. Like I'm just going to dwell on that. I'm going to work on becoming a better future husband, a better future wife, but I'm not going to focus on becoming, you know, um, more obedient to Christ. Mm. You know, I'm going to focus on because, you know, hopefully God will just bless me with, you know, the perfect person to do mission work with Mm. and to be in relationship with because I deserve it. And because I've been reading my Bible for the past year, every single morning. And because I feel like, you know, I would just be the best. I would spoil them and I would just, you know, take them out to dinner every week and we would hold a Bible study together, which are all good things. I feel like you're attacking a lot of people right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is awesome. But like, you know, even myself, like for the longest time when I was single, you know, before I was with Allie, I was first of all, just an idiot. Yeah. And many people could contest to that. I'm not, <laughs> I was an idiot. No, it's, it's yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's true. Um, <laughs> nice. Love you. And <laughs> I was, you know, either focused on, you know, using my singleness for my own good. Um, or I was justifying, you know, I'm going to do everything I can, um, to become a better boyfriend, to become hopefully a better husband. Um, but not because I wanted to obey Christ, but because I wanted to, um, be better for that person who hopefully God would bless me with because Mm. I felt like I deserved it. And it's like, you know, living on mission isn't about how we can be the best husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. It's about how we can be in a better relationship with Jesus and continually every single day, be obedient to him and help people know him more. And so I think that's kind of just how we ended the podcast and what we wanted to talk about in the second part. I think a big part too with singleness is that like, we're trying to find like the right person. Like we have, like, like we, we try to have good intention with like trying to find someone like we're obviously not trying to find a crappy person. And I mean, subconsciously we might land with someone like that just because we have poor judgment, but like overall it seems that we try to have a good heart with pursuing someone that is the right person for us. Um, and very often we get into a relationship and realize, Oh, like that's, that's not the person that I thought that I was getting into a relationship with. Like, Oh, things seem to be so much different than what I anticipated. Um, and we spend so much time trying to find the right person that we don't try to take any time to become the right person. Like we don't want to work on ourselves. We don't want to work on our relationship with Jesus. We would rather just find the person that's perfect for me. That does X, Y, Z, that leads a Bible study that's involved in the church that does worship that does, you know, X, Y, and Z for the kingdom. It's like, we're spending so much time trying to find that person. It's like, be that person and like go full force at that with your relationship with Jesus. And you will attract people like you will attract the right person. Like how I ended up finding Alyssa was not because I was looking for a relationship. It was because my soul heart was just like, let's pursue the kingdom and just go full force. And she just happened to be running along the path with me on the freeway. And I just, you know, we were at the same speed. We met, I was like, something's different about her. I pursued her as a friend first. I did not pursue it as a relationship. I was like, I need to see if this chick is cool first before I'm like trying to make emotional moves because emotional boundaries is another area that we have problems with. Um, And then we ended up dating and got married very, very quickly. And it's like, but the mindset behind it was not like looking for someone. The mindset was like our eyes need to be set on Jesus and pursuing him full force. And then along the way, we'll see people that are running at the same pace as us. Cause sometimes we'll compromise for someone that like, while we're full sprinting for Jesus, that other person is not there with Jesus. And so then it feels like we're being pulled back because somehow we have to be doing ministry for them and with them. And then at that point, it seems like, oh, I feel like I'm not growing as much because I feel like I'm having to pour into them. And then the relationship becomes the identity for Jesus, not individual. Because I see a lot of times we start to get into a relationship. We have um, someone that we're, you know, dating or we're talking to, quote, talking, because that's what we call it, I guess, these days. But you get into this habit of like going and doing a Bible study with them every morning and you like do everything in ministry. And then you wonder when you break up why 
like it was such an, a hard breakup, even if you weren't like physically intimate, it's because you realize you were sharing so much of your identity with Jesus with that person. And it's like your mindset needs to be first and foremost, Jesus more than anything in the world. And then along the path, you're going to find someone that's just doing the exact same thing as you. That's, I think, a beautiful image of what it looks like to find a relationship, but more than anything, what it's like to pursue singleness in the season that you're in. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people like want to be on mission for the Lord, but like they live as though their mission is to find a spouse and have two kids, Mm -hmm. you know, and lead a Bible study like Connor was saying. But I think that Jesus is a lot more radical than, than for every single person that I know having two children and having a Bible study. Like there's a lot of people who being discontent in where they're at relationally because they're not like spending time in the word, like they're not prioritizing their relationship with Jesus or missing out on callings and opportunities that he could be presenting to them or that he is. And they're just like skipping out on Mm -hmm. like, Oh, I don't want to move to this country or do this thing because my community is here. Like GCU is where all the ladies are at, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) So I don't know. Something like that. Um, fun fact, when I went to Zambia to, oh no, it was, I think it was three years ago. No, nope, it was two years ago. Yeah. Three years ago when I went, uh, Jack, the leader of the organization was telling me like, Hey, we're going to go meet the queen of Sananga. And I was like, Whoa, that sounds cool. And then he was like, by the way, she's single and whoever she chooses to marry her has to marry her. So, um, you might end up becoming the king of Sananga. <laughs> I was like, no, what? Right. Jack, no, <laughs> what? I don't want to stuck here. Uh, what? Are you serious? And he was like, bro, I'm messing with you, man. Like, she can't pick someone that doesn't live here. And I was like, oh, screw you, Jack. That's so <laughs> funny, dude. <laughs> what? Yeah. So um, it was it was quite an interesting meeting. But she was like 65 years old. Oh. So it would have been a really weird You're Like right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone who's mature. <laughs> <laughs> God exceeded my expectation. Someone who's mature in my faith. That's all I'm looking for. <laughs> hey, so what are what are some practical steps? Because this is going to be a little bit of a quicker uh, episode. But yeah. what are some practical steps that each of you want to share about what someone can be doing right now being single? Like, all right, I'm single. I'm kind of tempted to pursue a relationship. Or maybe I am I'm too focused on pursuing a relationship. Like, what are some practical steps on how I can start to focus more on my singleness and make the most of it? right now in this moment because this is all I have. Yeah, I mean, I think of just time, the time that I have, the free time that I have to choose and do whatever I want. Um, I really focus on relationships with guys. Um, I I honestly don't really have very many relationships or friendships with girls um, because once, you know, assuming that I get into a relationship or marriage someday, like, I'm only going to keep and maintain my relationship with my guys. Like those are the people I want to be surrounding me and holding me accountable. Like my wife's not going to be chill with me going and hanging out one-on-one with a girl who was my friend yeah. in the past, you know, mm-hmm. like it just makes sense. Um, so I think for me, what I've been doing is building relationships with people of the same gender mm-hmm. who are on fire for the Lord mm. and are guys who I see the fruit of like, their relationship with the Lord and their character, the way that they hold themselves, um, the things that they're doing are just like God honoring and people that I want in my life forever, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I'd go and reach out and do one-on-ones, like go get coffee, go for walks with people as much as I can because, you know, it's like not every friendship, not every guy, like we're not going to, I'm not going to click with everyone, but I'm looking for those few people who like, I get along well with and I'm just like, yeah, like I want you, I want you to be someone who holds me accountable. I want you in my mm-hmm. life, you know? And so sewing in those relationships are going to pay off because if I'm building those relationships with those guys right now, they're going to be the same ones that are going to call me out. If I get into a relationship with a girl that's toxic and that's not good yep. for my faith, my walk with the Lord. Yep. Um, so that's, I think the biggest thing is focusing on relationships with people of the same gender that you can have for the rest of your life. Um, and I think to still along the same lines of, of time, um, 
is a lot of people like say that like confess that they're Christian and that Jesus is Lord, but like how much time are you really spending in the word? Like if you're not spending at least 30 minutes a day, just like reading the word and praying, um, how can you expect to like have a healthy foundation for a relationship with someone new and still maintain a relationship with the Lord? Like, I don't know, Connor, do you have an estimate of like how much time you spend with Allie? Say um, in a day or a week or a lot of time. <laughs> a I lot honestly of can't time. give you an estimate. It's like, obviously it depends like, you know, if you're dating somebody at the same school, like me and Allie go to GCU. So it's like, we can see each other whenever we want. Right. Um, yep. which is a blessing and a curse sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, um, you know, I think you said something about, you know, you spend so much time trying to pour into like same gender, like guys, um, you know, maybe who are like younger than you and trying to be that mentor or even guys who just want to keep you accountable. Mm -hmm. Um, because when you get into a relationship or when you get married, you're not going to be able to just go hang out with girls all the time. Like, I don't think that's something that a lot of us think about. <laughs> like when we're, you know, especially at GCU, you're just like, man, I'm going to be friends with every single person all the time. <laughs> you know, like we're going to share the most inter in, uh, intimate secrets with each other in our testimonies, and everything, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's like, you know, there has to be some sort of thought for your future of like, okay, you know, I need to be spending more time with people who I'll have future relationships with, like especially guys um, that are going to last because just pouring your heart out to the opposite gender all the time. And then once you get in a relationship, you're not going to be able to continue doing that. Like, it's not that it's a waste, um, but it would be, um, I would think more helpful um, to focus our desires and our time, um, our kingdom work time with people who, you know, we're going to have lifelong relationships with who are going to keep us accountable, who are continue to be honest with us. Um, and I think that one thing that we can do, um, you know, just intentionally to be on mission, you know, while we're single is like doing all those things Christians talked about, which is just going on walks with guys, you know, having a morning Bible study and you know, doing all those, you know, might seem like small things, but they're super important and they build foundations for the larger things. Um, and you talked about Remy just asking that question of like, what do you do? Like, how do you spend that time? How do you be intentional? It's like, go do something big. Like, you're not going to have as much time to do that when you're in a relationship, when you're married. I know me and Remy wanted to go to Zambia last year for the whole summer for three months. Like that was our plan. And you were already, you know, with Alyssa, but like I was, I was single and mm -hmm. I was like super set. I was like, it's gonna be the best summer of my life. Literally. It's gonna be awesome. Like we're gonna, <laughs> gonna literally be so dope. like be doing mission work for three months, like our entire summer. And then COVID happened and we can do it. And now it's like, you know It's so like we wanna do it, but like I'm married now yeah. and like we can't just leave all of our responsibilities for three mm -hmm. months now. Like we already like we would have had our shot, but we missed it because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And like that's just an even more like a better example of like you have no idea what's coming. Like yeah. what you can do now is all you can focus on. Yeah. So like take that trip, go on, you know, an international disciple trip, go on a mission trip, just do those small things because you never know, you know, when that person comes into your life, you know, how much less time you have to devote for kingdom work. Yeah. I think for me to kind of wrap it up, cause I think both of you kind of nailed it on the head with community is such a huge factor. I remember in high school, um, once I like really recommitted my life to Christ sophomore year, um, that I had a mentor in my life that was super awesome. And on top of that, I had a best friend and, uh, dude, the three of us just did ministry together with everything. I swear it's, it was, it was probably the peak of the amount of ministry. Maybe like, I don't know, it's hard to compare it, but I swear every single day was waking up at 5 a.m., reading for about an hour, then going to a coffee shop down the street at 6 a.m. to meet up with someone, having coffee, sharing about Jesus, praying and reading, go to school, like focus the entire day on just like pouring into people, get out of school, would go hang out right after school, would hang out, play games, do whatever, you know, then we would do Bible study together. We started ideas together, which everything we did, we did it all together. And my mentor just got to continually pour into my life and just we did things around each other. 
it made so much community that we weren't even set on thinking about a relationship because we were so just focused on like doing ministry together and we weren't doing it with girls and people of the opposite gender because that would have been like it could it, there's some healthy aspects to it and there's some benefits but also it can be really unhealthy because it can be really tempting and i went through a season where i lost that mentor um, not like he died, but like he just <laughs> dipped out for a relationship. He got into a relationship and then my other guy that was my best friend also got into a relationship. And so both of them pieced out and I no longer had that community around me. And immediately the, the ministry focus in my life for the kingdom flipped mm -hmm. where I was not as focused anymore. I actually pursued a relationship. I wasn't doing as much with Bible studies anymore. I stopped committing to certain things that I was doing before. Like everything changed and it hasn't been the same since. And it's like, wow, I think I got a glimpse into something so beautiful that I think so many people that are single need to take advantage of right now. Like if you have that best friend that you can do ministry with, find that person and run full force. If you don't have a mentor in your life or someone that can pour into you, find someone. We can do a whole podcast on what it looks like to find a mentor. Cause you don't want to just go ask someone like, Hey, can you be my mentor? Cause that's a lot, but like find people that you really look up to and just ask a coffee with them and just do that every once in a while. And just like ask questions and just receive wisdom, um, and receive encouragement and those things. But like having that right group of people around you is going to set you up for so much success. Because if you hang around a bunch of people that are all married and like, or dating, then you're gonna be really tempted with a lot of those things. If you spend a lot of your time with people of the opposite gender, there's gonna be a lot of temptations that are gonna come with that stuff. But if you can find like the homies or the girls around you to like just pursue Jesus with like nonstop full force, like I guarantee you can do so much for the kingdom. And it's so much fun. Like it was such an amazing time in my life and like I desire it, but I know that like it will never be the same. So like for those of you who are single, you don't know when you're gonna find that person, but like pursue today as much as you can because you you do not know, but like there is so much beauty in being able to like full send it to somewhere for three months and do ministry to be able to commit to a new, another ministry or get involved with the church or start up your own Bible study or start up an Instagram. That's a page that's focused on faith for some reason, like so many ideas you can just run with because you have nothing that's holding you back except your own thoughts and the enemy with his, his temptations and those kind of things. Like that's the only thing that hold you back. Like there's no physical person, but once mm -hmm. you get into a relationship, it does. So take your singleness and run with it, but find the right people to surround yourself with, to set yourself up for success, not for failure. Yeah. Just real quickly when you were talking about that, like, um, you know, I was, I was like friends with you when, when that whole group was together doing all that ministry stuff. Yeah. And it was super awesome. And I just got like a picture in my head when you're talking about it of like Jesus and like the 12 disciples mm. and how they just went everywhere together. You yeah. know, it's kind of the same thing in a way. And it's like, <laughs> it'd be funny if like Jesus, like, come on guys, we're going to Jerusalem. We're walking there. Like we're going now. And, uh, you know, Matthew or John, they're like, Oh God, we got a froyo date with the wife. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not going to make it tonight. <laughs> you guys have fun, though. You're like, I'll totally be there next time. Um, but, you know, I got this commitment. Like, it's date night, you know, can't really get out of it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Well, anyways, you guys, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for um, listening in on this episode. I hope that it was somewhat helpful for you in your walk with singleness. Or maybe if you're in a relationship and you're not sure if you should still be pursuing it, um, just take the time to reflect, think about where you stand with Jesus first and foremost and prioritize that relationship more than anything in the world. Um, with that being said, we'll peace out of here and we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. <laughs> Say it, Christian. <laughs> peace out. See ya. <laughs> Later. <laughs> <laughs>